calibration gas bottles, critical to undertake your calibration procedure to ensure your gas detector is calibrated, folks. Yes, so calibration ensures that your gas detector is accurate, folks. That's the point of calibrating. You wanna make sure it's accurate. Now, when you do purchase a gas detector from Forensics Detectors, it already comes calibrated. You have your calibration certificate, you could see the signature, and you could see the date of calibration. Now, we recommend, in general, 12 months periodic calibration for every gas detector, monitor, and analyzer from forensics detectors. When it's time to calibrate, you can select to purchase your gas calibration bottle to purchase the gas regulator that comes with it. You need a gas regulator to control the flow of the high pressure gas that's in the bottle. You also need your tubing and calibration cap that attaches onto the detector. In this case, it's our FD98 calibration cap. Pop it on to the regulator on the barb fitting right over there, and you follow our YouTube tutorials on how to calibrate the respective model. So the good news is that Dr. Koz has gone to the effort and put together YouTube videos, tutorials, step-by-step, -step, where you could offer to your employees and your partners in your company, university, or corporation to undertake a calibration. You can elect to purchase everything yourself, or if that doesn't work for you, Dr. Koz, we don't wanna mess around, it's too complicated, we do not have time. Send it to us, we calibrate in 48 hours, and we ship it straight back to you folks, nice and easy, and you also get your fresh calibration certificate dated and signed by us here in our laboratory, so you don't have to worry about anything. Dr. Koz, what about bump testing? I'm confused, what's the difference between calibration bottles and bump testing and the bump test can that you have? They are two different procedures, folks. Now, if you do start the day, and you're gonna be using your gas detector, you wanna make sure it's functioning, it's working since the last time you used it. And that's why we have bump testing, point, shoot, sample, and make sure it's responding to the bump gas and the alarms are functioning. That's the whole point of bump testing. You wanna give it a little bump and make sure it's working. Whereas the calibration procedure, calibrating it to make sure it's accurate, to make sure that 50 parts per million is actually 50 parts per million and the unit is giving us accurate results. And when you do purchase your gas bottles from forensics detectors, you have the little brother and the big mama, two different sizes for two different products points, you also will see in the package you get a certificate of analysis that explains to you the accuracy of the bottle itself. It's been tested. It's the NIST traceability that you need to ensure that the traceability from our national government lab comes down to your gas bottle and you know that it's accurate. And in addition, you have the signature from the analyst and technician that mixed the bottle and tested the bottle. And in addition to that, you also have the date of manufacturing and the expiry date, which is very important. That's your certificate of analysis that comes with every single calibration gas bottle. Very, very important, folks. Now, Dr. Koz, what's this two-week lead time? Why do I have to wait? Why can't you just give me anything off the shelf? No. Gas in a cylinder is perishable. It's like milk. With time, it will degrade. That's why for every gas bottle, there are different expected lifetimes. For very reactive gas bottles, it's about six to 12 months. For more stable mixtures, it's up to 24 months. So please make sure you check the bottle. You can see when it was manufactured and you could also see the expiry of the bottle. So make sure you're within that time, folks. So we don't want to be selling old gas bottles to you. And that's why we have a lead time. When we get your order, we then send the order to the factory and we start making it, folks, and then we're gonna ship it to you in two weeks. Dr. Koz, what's zero calibration? Well, zero calibration is telling the gas detector in fresh air that zero is really zero. Sometimes you may experience one, two, zero, three, zero, one. It's flickering at the lower end. So you wanna expose the unit to fresh air or pure nitrogen to tell it zero ppm is actually zero ppm. Because shall I calibrate my unit more than just once every 12 months? Yes, you should actually. Now, my opinion is the following. You should calibrate the unit as often as 
possible. Now, what does that mean, Dr. Kaiser? Now you're really confusing me. If you are a scientist undertaking laboratory measurements, well, you want to be calibrating before you undertake the measurements so that when you're publishing your results or presenting your results to the group, to your boss, to your supervisor, to the team, to your corporation, that those results and that data is accurate. So the best way to do that is by calibrating your unit before you take the measurement. That's the only way you can ensure accuracy. The only way you will ensure accuracy is from calibration. It isn't from the dictator itself. There's some magic here in the electronic no folks, accuracy comes from calibration. So if you want it to be maximum accurate, you should be performing calibration before you take your measurement. Or you should perform calibration if there was an anomaly situation, if you expose the unit to high temperature where you should not have, you expose the unit to high humidity, or you expose your gas detector to high levels of concentration of gas that went over the maximum limit of the unit, which may have incurred some sensor poisoning, or if it's not coming back to baseline. So there are some situations where you want to undertake a calibration or where you think something's wrong, it's not performing well, or something happened, there was an anomaly situation, then we recommend performing calibration. What about ozone, Dr. Cos? Ozone is a unique gas, and ozone can't be captured in a bottle. It will degrade to oxygen, so it's an unstable gas. So we have to produce ozone with a special generator and then take it through an ozone calibrator, folks. So the only way that you will perform an ozone calibration is in a certified lab like at forensic detectors. We have sophisticated equipment to perform ozone calibration. You cannot do that by yourself or purchase some equipment to do it. No, folks, you need lab rated equipment that's calibrated to NIST standards to perform ozone calibration. Dr. Cos, the calibration gas is so expensive. Why is that the case? Why are you trying to rip me off, Dr. Cos? No, folks, calibration gas is typically very low levels of gas concentration, and it takes very sophisticated equipment, mixing equipment and manufacturing equipment to get the levels precisely where we need it to be for calibration purposes, folks. And that's why it's much more expensive than buying liquid propane at your gas station for grilling purposes. No, folks, this is not liquid propane. It's not a $30 gas tank, and you could just go off and start using it. These are sophisticated gas bottles with precise amounts of specific gas that you request. Dr. Koz, it's empty. You gave me empty gas. I can't hear anything. Typically, all our bottles that we ship for gas calibration will seem empty. It's not like your typical liquid propane that you use for grilling and you purchase from your supermarket or gas station, folks. No, this is calibration gas. It's a different beast altogether. Now, we're talking about liquid propane for grilling. That's why it's called LPG, liquid propane. In this case, it's just pure gas. There is no liquefaction and you won't hear, hear or feel any swooshing or swishing or anything like that, folks. It's pure gas in the bottles for all the gases that we have. And shall I calibrate, Dr. Cos? Now, please calibrate either in the outdoors at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit in middle humidity conditions from 30 up to 60% relative humidity. Now, if you only have an indoor situation, make sure you are using a laminar flow bench so that when you are calibrating and expelling gas, that the fumes can be expelled to the environment, folks. You don't want to be accumulating any toxic gases when you're calibrating. Please be attentive and please be sensible. Dr. Cos, what is the correct calibration concentration for my gas detector? Which gas do I need? Now, for every product that requires calibration at forensics detectors, we have the recommended calibration gas. We have the link straight to it, and we have the recommended calibration concentration, its respective gas, folks. So you will not be confused. Even if you peruse the calibration gas bottles, you can also see the respective gas detectors for the gas bottle. So we have cross-referencing on our website. What about safety data sheets of these gas bottles, Dr. Cos? Well, we have all the SDS safety data sheets for all our gas bottles on our website. So it will not come to you printed in the package that you receive. It's on the website, PDF'd for every gas bottle we have in Bump Gas, you will see the PDF SDS sheet on our website. Dr. Cos, can I use a different 
gas bottle from a different manufacturer to calibrate a forensics detector's gas detector. Yes, folks, you can, absolutely. Just make sure it's the equivalent recommended gas mixture that we recommend and you're good to go folks you're good to go now sometimes we've seen from our customers and working with everybody out there that you may get uh, the same gas mixture but the concentration could be lower or higher and things like that now be careful we have certain levels that we recommend that works with certain units but typically speaking you're good to go if there's any questions just let us know and double check with us Look, folks, I hope that all makes sense when it comes to calibration, gas bottles. Till then, be well, be safe, and see you soon.